What's up guys, welcome back, Patrick here and moving on to the next video. This is the exact same example that we did in the previous video where we're given these limits, these derivatives and we have to state what's the original function and that a value. So if you didn't watch that first video, recommend you do because I work with perhaps more simple functions in that one and kind of explain the process of how to do it and I'm going to be applying that exact same process here. Uh, and remember, the uh, definition of a derivative is one of these two here. This is the most fundamental one, the most popular one, and then this is the alternative one. And in the previous video, we had two limits in this format and then two limits in this format. However, notice in this video, all of these are in that first format. Because like I mentioned in that video, this format, I feel like it's tougher to work with because in this format, the a and the f of x are just stated in the limit. So there's not much work to do to figure them out because uh, they're already given, right, explicitly in that limit in the definition. Versus this one, you got to kind of do the work and figure out what's that a value and what's that function. So all of these are going to be in this format here. So I'll actually erase this. We're not going to use it. So first one, we got the limit as h approaches zero of e to the power of three plus h minus e to the power of three all over h. So if we take this and apply this, what is the uh, a value? Notice we got this three plus h here. So we got a plus h. So from here, we could tell the a value is three we got f of a plus h minus f of a. So what's the function? Well, we could tell that the function is e to the power of x that we're working with. So this here would give us the, um, the derivative of this function, e to the power of x, at that a value of 3. right? Because notice that f of 3 plus h would be e to the power of 3 plus h, which we have up here. And then f of 3, we're subtracting f of a, or f of 3 in this case, would be e to the power of 3, right there. So once you state this, you can actually forget about this, and maybe you could take this and apply that, and just make sure you have the exact same limit that you were looking at. Then you could be pretty confident that your answer is correct. Right, so that's the answer for number one. Number two, we got the limit as h approaches 0, 5 to the power of h minus 1 all over h. So this one's pretty tricky because notice that there's just an h by itself. There's no like a value plus h. Notice here we have this a value plus a. So just looking at this limit, we could be pretty confident that the a value is going to be pi over 2. But notice here we have this h by itself. So you got 5 to the power of h minus this one here. And this one, so basically f of a has to equal um, 1, and then we have f of a plus h, that has to be 5 to the power of h. So what function and a value will work for both of these expressions? So it's kind of tough to tell, but this h here by itself, we can actually rewrite this as 0 plus h, okay? So notice that if we do that, notice that a value would be 0, and then what would the function be? The function would be 5 to the power of that. So the function we're working with is 5 to the power of x, and notice 5 to the power of 0 gives us 1. So this 1 here, we can rewrite as 5 to the power of 0. Then when we rewrite it like that, it's obvious to see that the function we're working with is 5 to the power of x, and then the a value is 0. And then 0 plus h is just an h by itself. right? So be on the lookout for these kinds of limits where you have that h alone in the exponent. You're usually just going to be dealing with, um, with an exponential function in that case because you'll have this minus 1 here. And remember, any base to the power of 0, to the power of that a value of 0, would give you 1. Right? So maybe even using e, if you had something like the limit as h approaches 0 of e to the h minus 1, 
all over h. From here, you could tell a value is 0, and then the function is e to the x. Because you could rewrite this as e to the power of 0 plus h minus uh, e to the power of 0, which is 1. Right, so just in general, uh, let's actually just write a general rule here. When you got the limit as h approaches 0 of b to the power of h minus 1 all over h, the a value you're working with is 0, and then the function is some kind of base to the power of x, whatever that base is going to be there. Right? You just got to make sure it's in this exact format. And if it's in that exact format, then the a value is 0, f of x is going to be that base to the power of x. That's going to be the function. Okay, so just be on the lookout for these. These can be pretty tricky. Right? You got to add that 0 to the h there. Okay, moving on to the uh, third one. This one's not bad. We got uh, limit as h approaches 0 of sine of pi over 2 plus h minus 1 all over h. So we got a plus h, so the a value is pi over 2. And then you could tell that the function we're working with is uh, sine x. And notice sine of pi over 2 gives us 1, hence how they got that 1 here. So this 1 you could rewrite as sine of pi over 2. So we got f of a plus h minus f of a, right? a value is pi over 2, function is sine x. And then number 4. This one is tricky as well because notice we don't have that a plus h, we have just an h by itself here. But like in limit 2, you can rewrite this as the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 cos of 0 plus h minus 2 all over h. And then it becomes more obvious. Notice the a value in this case is 0 again. And the function that you're working with is 2 cos x. And notice this negative 2, it comes from 2 cos of 0. Because cos of 0 is just 1. And so negative 2 times 1 is just negative 2. So you don't have to write that cos of 0. They didn't write it. I wrote it there so you could see the function is indeed 2 cos x and the a value is 0. This here is f of a and this here is f of a plus h. Right? So another example that's a little tricky where you got to recognize that that a value is 0 so they had a 0 plus h here and this minus 2 that's by itself was really minus 2 cos 0. Right? Which is f of 0. Right? If that function is 2 cos x. Okay, so that ends up being the answer for number 4, a value is 0, f of x is 2 cos x.